particle moves in a straight line with an acceleration that is proportional to t squared, where t is the time in seconds. When t is equal to 3, the particle has a velocity of 5 meters per second. And when t is 6, the particle has a velocity of 10 meters per second. Derive an expression for the velocity of the particle at any time. All right, so the first line, let's look at this line and try to break it down a bit. So we have a particle moves in a straight line with an acceleration that is proportional to t squared. So let's say we have an acceleration. So let's say the acceleration is proportional to t squared. They didn't tell us if it was directly or indirectly, but we will assume here that it's directly proportional to t squared. So if it's proportional, we have to have a constant that is able to measure it over a period of time. That's why we can say now that acceleration must be equal to a constant k multiplied by t squared. So acceleration is equal to k t squared. Now, they told us when t is equal to 3 v is equal to 5 and the next one is when t is equal to 6 v is equal to 10 meters per second now they want us to derive an expression for the velocity of the particle at any time so we need to somehow turn this equation here acceleration equal kt squared into velocity. Now, the only link that we have with acceleration and velocity is that the gradient of a velocity time graph. So let's say we had a velocity time graph, velocity on this side, time on this side. The gradient of this or the rate of change of this would be equal to acceleration. Is say we had two points, you would calculate the change in the velocity. If we call this the y-axis and the x-axis, we usually find a gradient by saying whatever the change is in y, so y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1. This represents the gradient. Likewise, if it's for velocity, we would have like v2 minus v1 over t2 take away t1. This is just being used to draw reference between velocity and acceleration. So basically, what we are saying here between the gradient is that y2 take away y1 is actually a change in y. So we have delta y over delta x. Likewise, we have a change in v over a change in t. So if we are saying that a change in v over a change in t is equal to acceleration, we could also say that that change is equal to kt squared. That's because the gradient of the velocity time graph or the change in v over change in t gives us acceleration, which we have here. I did not actually have a graph to work with. However, I have a formula, kt squared, and based on this question here, they never told us what is the initial velocity when time is equal to zero. Therefore, we need to come up with an equation that can help us to work out what that was. So, change in v over change in t, this should remind you of something in differentiation. But instead of writing delta as a triangle, we write it as this. So what we're saying here is that the change in velocity and change in time is equal to kt squared. So in other words, for us to be able to figure out what v is equal to, we need to integrate this equation. So I can say v is equal to integral of kt squared. Therefore, v is equal to so k is just a constant, so we're integrating with respect to t. So if I'm going to integrate this, that means I have to add 1 to the power and divide the whole thing by the new power. So it would be 2 plus 1. I'm dividing this whole thing by 2 plus 1. And because I'm integrating, I need to add a constant. So what I have is v is equal to kt to the power of 3 over 3 plus c. So this is my expression so far, but now I need to figure out what k is and what c is so I can complete the expression. So what I need to do now is substitute for t and v into this formula for both scenarios. So then I will end up with two equations and potentially be able to solve for k and c. So by substitution, we could say v is equal to 5. And we have k t to the power of 3 so this time we have 3 st so 3 to the power of 3 over 3 
plus c so if i simplify this i'll end up with 5 is equal to 3 to the power 3 is 27 27 divided by 3 is 9 so i'll have 9k plus c and this is my first equation the next time we say that v is equal to 10 so i'll say 10 is equal to k times time so this time time is to the power of 3 still but this time we have time is 6 so times 6 to the power of 3 divided by 3 plus c so we we'll end up with 10 is equal to 6 to the power of 3 is 216 and if we divide that by 3 we we'll get 72 k plus c so that's our next equation so we have two equations now we have two unknowns so that means we're working with a simultaneous equation here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make c the subject in this formula and then substitute it into c in this case so i could figure out what a k is if i want to get c by itself i subtract both sides by minus 9k and i'll end up with now I can substitute this whole expression into C in order to figure out what K is. So that would allow me to get rid of the C. So I'll end up with 10 is equal to 72K plus 5 minus 9K. So if I subtract both sides by 5, I will get all the numbers on one side and keep these expressions on this side. So that would give me with 10 minus 5, which is equal to 72K minus 9K. So 10 minus 5 is 5 which is equal to 72k minus 9k is going to give us 63k so if you divide both sides by 63 we get the value of k so k is equal to 5 over 63 now if i want to find a value of c i can take this value of k now and substitute it back into this value here of k to get c so i'll end up with 5 minus 9 times 5 over 63 is equal to c i'll end up with 5 minus so 9 can go into itself 1 and 9 can go into 63 7 times so we'll be left with 5 take away 5 over 7 which is equal to c now if we make 5 a fraction 5 over 1 lcm of 1 and 7 is 7 1 into 7 goes 7 times that would be 3 to 5 take away 7 to 7 goes once which is 5 so therefore so we could basically say c is equal to 30 over 7 now if i'm writing this formula back i can now say that v is equal to k so i can replace it back with k 5 over 6 to 3 times t to the power of 3 over 3 plus c which is 30 over 7. So if i simplify this i will get v is equal to 5 t to the power of 3 over 63 times 3 plus 30 over 7. so therefore this is our answer right here so essentially we have an expression for v in terms of t therefore we can work out the velocity for any time t if you want you can also back check this if you try to put 3 into this formula and walk it out you'll end up getting back the same value for v i hope you guys enjoy question 5 and hopefully you take a lot and learn a lot from this so continue to work hard and make the best out of all the opportunities until exam good luck